Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, you all know that, right? Everybody in the land knows that now. So we have uh, here at Pearl of Wisdom Industries, we get letters, and uh, Guido goes down into the mail room and brings up the letters and pours them all over the letter table. We all do a little Pearl of dance, which... If you've seen my other videos, you'll see. You won't see them now, though, because I haven't figured out how to do that thing where you got my face on the screen and you can see this. And uh, this is cat friendly we're looking at right now. Cat friendly. It's the best there. I said it. Anyways, we got some letters. We got uh, uh, Mario Mahoney from uh, Arizona who is asking, what is it that, uh, first of all, we got lots of letters asking if when am I going to start my summer series, and uh, here we are, we're starting right now. We're starting with the Arizona, because he's asking, what, what, what do you think about Arizona? What's going to happen? Are they going to leave, or uh, how good of a team are they going to be? How are they going to be this year? And all the things like what happened, uh, what do you think about the free agent signings that they did, and all that kind of stuff like that. I thought, well, let's get right into it. So, okay, that's what we're doing. We're going we're gonna to talk about the Arizona Coyote, not the most favorite team in the land out there. When I do these, I, I generally don't get too many views, but I do them anyways because we care about every one of you out there. So if you're an Arizona fan, tell me in the bottom what you think about this uh, fine programming I'm giving you. If uh, you agree with uh, my assessment to the team and what they've done and where they're going and all of that. And even if you're not, just talk, comment down there. Let's connect, boys and girls. Thank you for all your subscriptions to the channel. Uh, also over at BPAL Picks, we're getting people over there too, where we bring you some fine picks daily. You can make some money. You can enjoy just having fun talking about picks and all of those sort of things like that. Go to uh, the uh, Patreon app there and check that out. But okay, let's get into the Arizona Coyote here. So let's start off with the fact that... Uh, Shaka got Shuka right out of town, and he kind of did it to himself. The whole situation, Shaka was a general manager of the Arizona Coyote, decided he wanted out, and the owner was like, I don't want that to happen, and uh, he was like, yeah, it's happening. <laughs> Took on some, got some role in New Jersey and booted himself out after making some horrendous decisions within this organization. I don't know how much this is ownership uh, made decisions or what have you. A lot of desperation, I find, that happens with the uh, Arizona Coyote. For instance, they brought in Taylor Hall, gave up their first pick, and uh, a few prospects, good prospects, Bowl and uh, uh, what's his name? Top to top of my head, uh, Snars, something like that. Anyways, probably none of you know. Gave up a lot for Taylor Hall. And everybody in the land, in NHL land, was like, there's no way Taylor Hall's staying there. And there's no way that Arizona is going to afford it. Because somehow, with a bad team, Sheka made this team cap to the cap. Like, it's a cap team. They have no cap room at all. Uh, mostly because of signing players like Jason Demers to $4 million contracts for six years. Still one more year left. Uh, Goligoski, uh, five and a half. It wasn't a bad contract when they did it. The thing was, was I, I see what he was trying to do. He was trying to build a strong veteran defense and then hopefully hit on some draft picks and bring in some forwards that would give them enough offense to be able to win. I kind of get it, but it's it left them capped out, and the problem was they didn't hit on their draft picks. Let's look at their top three as of right now because of situations that have happened. We know Taylor Hall has been let go. He's been off, off on his way to Buffalo. He's off to other lands, and uh, that leaves them with, well, here at Cat Friendly, and I love the guy, and I do love the people at Cat Friendly. They're fine folk. 
Um, but they have Lawson Kraus, Derek Stepan, and Clayton Keller as the first line for the Carolina, or, or for the Carolina, or for the Arizona Coyote. I would have to think that Connor Garland's got to be up here. You need somebody, if you're going to be, have a line like this, I kind of get it. Have some guy on the side with some size, Lawson Kraus, who can put up maybe 30 points in a season. Um, Derek Steppen's the most experienced center that they have, but he does not put up any points. Let's look what Derek Steppen has put up in the last little while for his awful, I didn't even talk about that, six and a half million dollar contract that he got from the New York Rangers. That Sheka went and grabbed from the New York Rangers, terrible contract, uh, wasn't putting up points when he got brought, well, he was, wasn't really putting up many points when they took him from the Rangers, and it's been a downhill slope. 28 points last year. I probably don't want him as my number one center. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go with Christian Dvorak up there. Uh, Clayton Keller, Christian Dvorak of the 24-year-old who was also given a $4.5 million kind of gamble contract that could have worked out really well if he would have worked out to be the number one center they thought. He hasn't. He's more of a 2-3 tweener. And now we're stuck with $4.5 million for a guy whose upside is questionable. But we have to put him as a number one center. Either that or we put Nick Schmaltz there. Nick Schmaltz um, would probably be the guy I would put there. He's not a big guy, six feet, but he's not small either. Um, making $5,850,000 a year to put up 45 points last year. These are poor contracts to poor players that leaves this team with not much to uh, work with. Mr. Armstrong from St. Louis came over as a manager and has to do something with this team. So what do we do? We got Kraus. We're going to put Schmaltz there and hope. Cross our fingers. Clayton Keller, underwhelming so far in his young career. He's only 22. He can turn things around. He certainly has a lot of skill. But having guys like Schmoltz or Stepan or Dvorak as your center in those situations as you're trying to grow is not the best case scenario. Let's put it that way. Then we got the terrible trade with Pittsburgh where they picked up Phil Kessel. I won't even tell you what went back because it doesn't really matter. Just getting Phil Kessel in at all was a terrible move. Phil Kessel was, uh, as has been the rumor, and he's taken much uh, flack for, has not been a guy that's really been into the conditioning. And he's at 33 years old, had a terrible year last year, mostly because he says he was the most banged up he's been in his whole career. Well, you figure... If you don't work out and exercise your whole career, be happy. It's amazing that he's gone as far as he has and was a 40-goal scorer without being a well-conditioned athlete. But eventually, that's going to catch up to you. And guess what? It has to the peril of Arizona fans. You're going to have to watch this $6.8 million player for another two years float around and be banged up. I am almost assure you of that. Uh, again, Connor Garland, probably one of the best uh, bright spots, or Barrett Hayton is going to get a really good chance. He was a first pick in 2018, or sorry, a fifth overall pick in 2018. Has been brought along fairly slowly, only had four points in 20 games, did have a point a game and, uh, and for Tucson, and then a really good under 20 World Junior Championships, he's going to get a good chance to play. So the really the only real bright spots are Connor, Connor Garland, who can be possibly a 30-goal scorer. Had 22 last year in 68 games. I'm putting him up on my top line and hoping for the best. He's small, but he's gritty. Not really the best defensive player in the world, but that's what we got. So you're looking at Connor Garland, Schmaltz and Clayton Keller as your best three players. Let me tell you, boys and girls, if I am a team and I'm saying that to myself, we got to look at which direction we're going to go. 
I can tell you about, okay, some of the, so, some free agents that were picked up. Tyler Pitlick at 28 years old. I'll tell you, this tells me kind of the direction that I think Armstrong is going. John Hayden and Johan Larson. 25, young, young 25, John Hayden, who is no more than a fourth liner. Johan Larson, a 28-year-old who um, was a decent third liner for the Buffalo Sabres. Why would he pick up guys like this? Well, there's several reasons. First of all, they have character. These Pit, Tyler Pitlick is a great character guy. Extremely hardworking. And come playoff time, this Tyler Pitlick will have some value out there. You might be able to get a third round pick for Tyler Pitlick and come come trade deadline time. Johan Larson, uh, John Hayden, maybe fourth, fifths picks. So this tells me really the direction that Armstrong is planning on going here. And that is we're looking at a complete rebuild. And that's really the only thing we can do here with Arizona because uh, and that would include, to me, a trading away Schmaltz that we just talked about. He probably has value at 24 years old, although that contract would be difficult to get rid of, um, unless he puts up a really good year. Hope for a strong year from Nick Schmaltz. That's the reason why I would play him up on the top line. Get as many points as possible. Make those stats, pad those stats, because you're not getting rid of Derek Stepan for nothing. Nobody's taking that $6.5 million contract. Fortunately, he's a free agent at the end of the year, and we're done with that. You're not getting rid of Phil Kessel until the end of 2022. Don't even think about it. Nobody's going to touch it. So you get rid of these, as many guys as you can. You sell them off for, for draft picks, and we're in a complete rebuild. Now, I feel in all this way, and I haven't even got to the defense where the whole rumor happened with Oliver ekman Larson. Oliver Ekmer Larson has been rumored to be on the trade block. Uh, apparently, the owner said he wants to cut $15 million in contracts uh, over for the next year. That is one, and they haven't even really started doing that yet. Uh, Oliver Ekmer Larson, of course, has a no trade clause, which is very difficult because he can choose where he goes, and apparently, he chose two teams. Vancouver and Boston. Boston is a slight possibility after not signing John uh, Krug, St. Louis picking them up. Ever so slight. However, no way Boston is going to be, uh, let's look at Boston really quick. Uh, no way Boston is going to be uh, taking that full contract. They've only got $10 million in cap space and they have some very important players to sign. In the next little while, David Krejci, if they resign him, uh, I believe McAvoy is going to be in two years, and that is an eight million dollar contract for a very long time. If there's any chance of trading him, you'd have to. I think they'd have to take at least a John Moore back, which is only, and and it doesn't really matter who they who you get back here. You can take a John Moore back. He might have value at the trade deadline. Because all we're doing is picking up picks and getting rid of salary. So John Moore, and hopefully you can get uh, a second round pick or something like that to add to your picks and you get rid of a fine player like Ekman Larson. From what I understand, Armstrong's asking for like a ridiculous thing like two first round picks or something like that. He's not getting that in a cap world no matter what. And I know Arizona fans are saying, but Ekman Larson is such a great player and all of those things like that. Yes, he, he well, he sort of is. He's had some down years the last two years, which is no surprise playing for the team that I just explained here, but uh, that I've been showing you right now. It's been a poor team. Arizona has been almost making the playoffs because of these two guys right here, Ranta and Darcy Kemper. And... Rick Tockett playing a defensive system built from that, which basically is collapse around the goaltender and desperately block shots and let Kemper stop as much as possible. Hopefully in doing so, we can get the puck and go down the other end. That's really how they've been playing. 
And honestly, you're just not going to continually be able to win and make a playoffs playing like that. So I am going to say that, um, yeah, Oliver Ackerman Larson probably won't be able to go anywhere. So what are we going to do? We got to get rid of $8 million. Darcy Kemper has been talked about, about being traded. Now, if this team wants to be anything at all, they can't trade that. If they're going to rebuild, and by the way, a rebuild here, which was not even hardly a build, would probably signal the end of the Arizona Coyote in the desert. It, 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 I cannot see an ownership being able to go through a rebuild and the financial costs that come with that, with nobody already showing up, not building up a fan base anymore because this limited fan base already is probably not going to be too motivated to come watch a rebuild and then be last place for the next five years. So you might as well get rid of Darcy Kemper. You can actually bring back some picks. Darcy Kemper is one of the finest goaltenders in the land. He, if he wouldn't have got injured and they could happen to make the playoffs, he probably would have got a Vesna. You might be able to get two first for Darcy Kemper. Um, who needs a contract right away, but he's that good that somebody would probably give you that. And I think that's really what they have to do. As far as uh, they, they do have some forwards like Jan Janik, who, who, who did well in junior, that they're going to give full chance to play this year. But besides that, it's pretty sparse in the prospects list. And that's the other thing. The uh, That's the other thing. They don't have very many prospects. This general manager not only made it so they're capped out, they, he also did not stock the cupboards and prospects while doing it. You have Victor Soderstrom. That'll be great if he can come up and play right away, um, if he turns out to be okay. But besides that, there really isn't much here, boys and girls. Uh, Philip Westerlin is a ways away. So... The reality of the situation in Arizona is quite simple. Um, they have to rebuild and probably end up losing their team. Simple as that. There is really not much else you can do. Uh, you, the team is completely capped out. They have zero cap space at all left right now. Um, and that is without signing Taylor Hall. So I don't know how anybody ever thought they were going to sign Taylor Hall, Mr. Shaka, you know, because look at current cap space, zero, zero dollars for a team that just barely made the playoffs. There are some good things I will mention before I head out here. If you look here, you have Goligoski, Nicholas Jalmerson, solid 33-year-old, 35-year-old defenseman, Jason Demers probably his career is almost over now. He's really had a down slip ever since he left Florida. Um, Osterle, maybe resign him. And Lyabushkin, they signed for a million dollars. But basically, their whole defense is a UFA next year. So you can start. We can start the rebuild with a new slate, more cap room. Try to bring in some younger free agents. The other positive thing is, is you have there is a, a lot of players going to be available once the expansion for Seattle happens next year. There's going to be a lot of players out there that you can pick up for dirt cheap to fill out this roster a bit to start the rebuild. So at least you have manpower. That's the best I can say about Arizona. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Uh, if you're an Arizona fan, I really feel for you. I really feel for your loss that you're likely... Tell me if you think otherwise. Tell me somewhere where you can say, hey, this is we can do something here. If I'm them, I'm trading Dvorak, Schmaltz, uh, Clayton Keller, everybody. Just total breakdown, rebuild. Keep Barrett Heighton, maybe Clayton Keller. But probably not. Get rid of it all draft picks, uh, pick, pick up some players off the waiver wire, and you're going to suck for the next seven years. Sorry, that's about the best I can say. Then maybe you can build a dynasty as quickly as possible. 
Um, that's all I see for Arizona. Tell me if you think otherwise. Tell me what you think they can do other than what I just said. Um, maybe when you look at it, if the ownership is like, okay, we want to keep the team here, you have all this cap space that comes off. Uh, don't Stein Derek Stepan. So let's look what it says. Next year, you're going to have 32 million in projected space. That might get you three good players after losing one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, maybe. So you add a couple $5 million players and you try your best. Personally, I would just try to get to the cap floor, sell off everything I can, and start this team all over again. Well, boys and girls, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give. Tell me what you think. Tell me everything, all your thoughts and your dreams down there in the comment section. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, don't forget, subscribe, hit the bell and all that stuff. Lots of love to ya.